everybody. It's time for another $100 supersize sales video. This is about you, the eBay community, and what you sold. These sales come from a dedicated thread on my Facebook group every month. This video includes sales from February 2023. Now one housekeeping detail. Make sure your photo is big enough to see the item. This is a learning thread and if the photo is too small that defeats the purpose. The best way is to post from a computer with a screenshot like this so your image is large and the title is easy to read and you can see the price. We are seeing a lot of posts like this taken from the eBay mobile app with a tiny photo and many of these are deleted because the photo is just too small to be helpful. So if you are posting from your phone using the eBay app just click through the screens until you get to the one with the big photo. It literally takes five seconds. For example here is one of my sold items as it appears on my app in the sold section and you can see how little that photo is. So you just want to click on that part at the top there with the photo and the title and you may have to go through two or three screens to get to the last one that has the big photo. So just keep clicking on that title and small photo until you get to a screen like this. Very simple and then you can just take your screenshot and if you want to take a couple of seconds to crop the photo that would be great. But here is a before and after and you can see the difference. The photo is so much bigger and it's just easier to read and everybody can see what the item is this is also mentioned in the group rules number five under Money Making Monday and $100 threads. We ask that you use full size photos when sharing a sale. Thumbnails or screenshots of multiple sales are hard to read. These threads are educational for all members. So if photos are too small, the post is not helpful and posts with tiny photos will be removed. We know you're excited about your sales and you want to post them quickly, but we do ask that you take a minute or two to get to that screenshot with the large photo so that we don't have to delete your post and it will be helpful to everyone reading the thread. Okay, now let's get into your sales. We're going to start with Diane Stumpf, paid 50 cents for this pair of vintage Giorgio Armani eyeglasses. Listed them last May for $199.99. Received an offer today for $100 and I hit the accept button so fast. I am new to selling eyeglasses and decided to look into it thanks to encouragement from Suzanne. It is definitely an overlooked item at my thrift store. Glad I caught the vision. Ha <laughs> ha, good one Diane. So there you see some vintage Armani eyeglasses frames sold for a hundred dollars. Next up is Jenny Payan purchased at Goodwill for four dollars. Took about three months to sell for best offer of a hundred dollars plus shipping. The item is Staud Moreau bucket bag. Never seen one of those. That's an interesting item. Four dollars and sold for a hundred. Jane Brown. I got this from a store that was closing and going to be demolished. Everything was going in the dumpster. I went for clothing racks but they said I could take anything I wanted for free. Came across nine of these and this is my first one to sell. I accepted an offer of a hundred and two dollars trash to cash in two weeks and this is an echo lab water filter replacement cartridge free 
and sold for $102. And here we have Zachary McDoor with a circus punk that sold for $100. He is actually coming on the podcast in a couple of weeks and he's going to talk about his circus punk haul. He's been selling a lot of these and I've never even heard of these and aren't they creepy looking. <laughs> anyway, this one sold for 100 and it's circus punk's Gamma Go Yeti Tim Biscup Art Doll Toy Figure. That is a lot. <laughs> a lot of keywords. Sold for $102.51. Jackie Basie. A book, baby. I purchased it for $3 at the bins on Friday. Listed Saturday night and sold for full price six hours later. Going to Italy. I learned the value of non-fiction books in this group. The same title sold recently in a contested auction for $95, so I price mine a bit higher, plus it gets me on the supersize thread. Monthly is my 2023 goal. I love that goal, Jackie. And she said hers was the only one listed. It is a Jehovah's Witness Watchtower Family Care and Medical Management book with the slipcase. $105 and she paid three. Next is Eileen the book lady. She said this vintage pop-up children's book was a dollar at a used book sale. Listed for $149 and sold via offer to watchers for $109. It took several months to sell. The book is Hans Anderson's Fairy Stories, 1930s pop-up book. So a lot going on with this book. A dollar and sold for a hundred and nine. And then Eileen has another sale. I picked up this book series at an estate sale for ten dollars. Sold via offer to watchers for 109 and took about eight months to sell. And these are Sweet Valley High novels numbers 1 through 42 so that's a pretty big lot plus seven super editions 10 bucks sold for a hundred and nine and now we have Dina Napoli purchased this pair of large Bakelite dice two years ago in an auction lot with other items for five dollars I just never got around to listing them and was lost in my death pile listed for $110 and sold in 50 minutes. So there's your encouragement to get your items listed. They could sell right away. This is a pair of vintage black Bakelite dice with rounded corners. And Dina, I have to tell you something. I moved to Greenville last fall and right down the street from me is this Napoli Greek and Italian restaurant. It's literally less than a mile from where I live. So I pass it frequently when I'm out and about running errands and whatever. And I always think of you <laughs> because it's got your name on it. So <laughs> there you go. There's your shout out, Dina. There's a restaurant named after you here in Greenville. Moving on to Justin Swaim, purchased a large lot of about 150 Star Wars figures last August for $2,200. I'm well into the profit now with many still left to sell. These two sold in February. Luke sold for a best offer of $110 and Obi-Wan for $105. My most expensive one was a Padme Amidalia Attack of the Clones figure that sold last year for $280. So this is the Luke Skywalker figure that sold for $110. Diana Warren, a state sale find, $4 sold for $114.44 in about one week after listing. 1985 Tonka Gobots Enemy Robot. Hmm. 
$4 sold for just under $115. Ginger Lamp Bright. I bought this at a garage sale in November 2022 for $10. Sold for best offer of $115 with free shipping. Garmin receiver, cables, and manual. And mounting bracket with original box. Ten bucks turned into a hundred and fifteen. And my neighbor here in Greenville, Leslie Weagle, bought this at a thrift store for three dollars and fifty cents. Listed in early August 2022. Sent out several offers and even had it on sale for the last two weeks of January. Sold for full asking price of $119 plus shipping. The only story I have is that while I was waiting in line at the checkout, a lady picked it out of my cart and said she wanted it. I'd only been reselling for about a month at that time and was not prepared for a checkout confrontation. I literally pulled it from her hands and said, it's a gift, so I wouldn't be giving it to her. Um, I have no words. That was pretty brazen of someone just to take something out of your cart. Um, I feel like if it was me, I would have like punched him in the face or something. <laughs> I don't think I would have been so nice about that. <laughs> anyway, it is an antique Moser Amber Cut Bohemian Glass Vase. $3.50 and sold for $119. Kim DeSoller Hendricks Spence found two of these for $5 each. The other one was blue and has sold already. Purchased at a vintage antique booth. I knew they were special. They had a frosted look and noticed they were signed. Took best offer of $125. Vintage signed Franco Moretti Murano glass bottle. Five dollars and sold for a hundred and twenty-five. Christy Coffer. This was a fun one. A personal bolo. Found this vintage t-shirt at the bins. Didn't even realize the elephant was in a field of marijuana until I got it home. I just knew it was a cool looking vintage shirt. I don't usually investigate my buyers unless it's a high dollar sale or the item is a little weird, like our very happy elephant friend here. Got sort of aggressive low ball offer right away, then another one from a buyer who had the same shirt on auction. So I waited until his auction ended to counter him and I never heard back. A few weeks later it sold for an offer of $125 which I was perfectly happy with. Paid about a dollar. The item is 80's Vintage Hawaiian Marijuana Elephant <laughs> Hawaii T-shirt. So that is an interesting story. And she said, how much did she pay for it? Probably not much if it was at the bins. Sold for $125. Okay, Rachel Hilst. I bought this Taylor Swift blanket at Goodwill for $5. It sold for $125 plus shipping in about two weeks. Taylor Swift Fearless Album Woven Throw Blanket Tapestry with Fringe. It sold for $125 and she paid five bucks for it. Suzanne Keen finally found a lovey that was worth real money. This llama one is by Nate Burkus for Target. I paid four dollars for it at a thrift store. Listed for $149.99, sold on best offer for $127. Took over a year to sell. Now take a look at this. How plain looking is that? It's just a white blanket with a little white llama in the middle of it. How many of these have we passed over because they're just so plain looking? But yet it sold for $127. <laughs> so if you aren't selling, 
Loveys and Plush. Come to the Premium Library and take the courses on those items because this is often an overlooked category. There's kind of an ick factor to selling Loveys and Plush, but you just take them home and put them in the washing machine and all the ickiness just goes away. So anyway, check out that course if you haven't so far because um, there's gold in that plush and here's an example. Okay, Don Shervani bought at a garage sale for $3. Sold in just over a week for $127.50. The item is Gobel Hummel Vintage Musical Bumblebee Figurine Set. Three bucks, sold for $127.50. Moving on to Brian Rappaport. Was skimming through Facebook Marketplace the other day and found somebody with 10 Starbucks for sale. I looked them up on eBay and saw that this Egypt one was worthwhile, so I made a real quick deal and paid $40 for all 10 of them. Sold this one for $129.99 plus shipping in a day and a second one for $24.99 already. I listed all 10 of them for a total of $335. So this is Starbucks coffee mug Icon City Series Egypt. His cost was $4 and it sold for $129.99. Christy Foreman got it at the bins for a dollar. Sold in three hours for full asking. No best offer submitted. Vintage Dimensions Gold Collection Victorian Santa Cross Stitch Stocking Kit. One dollar sold for $129.99. Brett Stewart bought this castle at Goodwill for $14. Took offer of $130. Took a few months to sell. Not sure how to pronounce the name, but I'm going to go with Schleich. Medieval Fantasy Castle 12 Pieces 2004. $14 sold for $130. Patrice Peterman, another item from the same estate sale. Bought for $1 and after lots of research I decided to auction it. Sold in one week. That was a good estate sale. This item is Martha Stewart by Mail. Fenton Jadeite Green Glass Rolling Pin. One dollar sold for one forty one fifty. Andrea Wittenhagen bought this for five dollars at Goodwill, but it was missing half the plastic alphabet letters, so I was able to find a set online for around twelve dollars. Listed for about two months and sold for $144. This is Play-Doh Cookie Monsters Letter Lunch 2010 Sesame Street. So her investment was $17 and it sold for $144. Jennifer Stevens bought these for $70 on clearance. Sold for full price plus shipping in less than a week. Nice quick turnover. Timberland Men's Waterproof Chukka Gore-Tex Brown Leather Ankle Boots. So she basically doubled her money, $70, and it sold for $149.99. Louis Prizzy paid $6 at Savers. Buyer accepted a best offer of $149.95 after four months. Barbie Limited Edition Coca-Cola Soda Fountain Playset. Six dollars sold for just under a hundred and fifty. Tammy Mitchell purchased at thrift store for six dollars. Sold in a month for full asking price of one forty nine ninety six. This is a cool liner prosthetic leg cushion. Six dollars sold for just under a hundred and fifty. Jay Moore always have great luck with windstone items. 
They usually are dragons, but this cat was a great $5 buy at a garage sale. And it sold for $150. Windstone Editions Pina Winged Gargoyle Cat. Isn't that an interesting item? And nice profit. Katie Sue, free from a garage sale last summer, took best offer of $150. Ray-Ban sunglasses. Nice. Free and sold for $150. Patrick Deering bought for a dollar at an estate sale warehouse the day before I listed it for eBay auction. Sold and got paid $157.50. Had 38 people watching, my most ever, but only four bids. Antique advertising Guernsey set of D. Laval promotional tin cow calf with envelope. This was a dollar and it sold for $157.50. Mary Alice Fontenot Gray got this at Savers in a bag of sewing notions and needlepoint. Didn't realize till I got home what I had. Paid about $2.00 for it. The whole bag was $9.99 and I had a 20% off coupon. Sold within the week of listing it. This is an Airman E-H-R-M-A-N 2009 Needlepoint Tapestry Kit and it sold for $165. Rosanna Smoker. Linens have been doing really well for me lately. Purchased this set for $8.00 Sold in a few weeks for $170 plus shipping. And here we have another Ralph Lauren print. Jamaica Paisley Coral King Fitted and Flat Sheet. $8 sold for $170. Charlie Bates. I thought the stories of these being worth something were folklore. But it's true. Bought it for $2.00 sold for a hundred and seventy five. Does anyone know why people pay so much for these? Why yes Charlie I do. At least one reason is that the vintage vinyl inflatables are thicker and more durable and people use these as a raw material to make other items specifically costumes for cosplay and probably other things too that I don't know about so that's what's going on with these vintage inflatables this item was a rare 2006 Intex the wet set jumbo inflatable beach ball so yes this is a real thing. It's not folklore. <laughs> it's not an urban myth. It's true. She paid $2 and this sold for $175. Leisha Rouston sold this amazing christening gown to a buyer in Australia for $199.50 after my offer was accepted. Bought this gown at a thrift store last year for $6. It had lots of interest but no takers after sending out many offers. Wanted to hold out for the right buyer because I thought the workmanship was extraordinary. A true heirloom piece. This is an antique christening gown with corded lace Victorian style. And it sold for $199.50. Her investment was $6. Cindy Minders picked up this about a year ago for $30. Decided I could let it go now. Put it on a seven day auction. This is a vintage Viking glass mushroom paperweight. That is very fun looking. <laughs> very mid century modern. So it was $30 and it sold for $201. George Kelly. Bought this bell at a garage sale last summer for $20. Accepted a best offer of $220. Took two months to sell. Vintage 1940s World War II Navy cast iron bell. $20 bucks, sold for $220. Karen Monks 
Auctions have been super glitchy for me lately, but this one went through. My husband paid $4 at a garage sale for a box of what we referred to as the Dusty Bunnies. About 50 cents into this one with a clear description on how musty and dusty it was, as we figured a collector would have better luck than us cleaning these. Sold for $231 on auction. The item is Bunnies by the Bay Catnap. Kathy handcrafted, I guess it's a figurine, it's not really a doll. 50 cents, sold for 231. Jennifer Clausen, I picked these up at the end of a trip to my favorite thrift store. When I saw them, I thought, these are hideous. They were like fake plastic distressed jeans. But when I saw they were Gore-Tex, I took a moment to check them and wow, they sold within two days. Purchased for $20, sold on best offer of $240. These are Burton denim jeans with Gore-Tex ski snowboard snowmobile pants. What a cool find. Leanne Scrock, so happy to post on this thread. Being a newer member, I've been binging the supersize videos on my TV. This item came up on one of the 2021 episodes. My hubby was in the room and said, hey, I have one of those. He used it maybe twice and it's just been sitting in the closet. I got it listed and it sold for a best offer of $245 in less than a week. A big thanks to Suzanne <laughs> and my husband. The item is a Go Ruck backpack. Yes, these are very high quality and it's used for really anything you want, but they're made for rucking, which is basically walking or light jogging with a heavy backpack. Um, it's good for your core. You get a better workout when you're carrying weight all that kind of stuff. So the brand is Go Ruck, and yes, they are expensive. Wendy Kruger paid $10 at an estate sale, sold for $250 plus shipping in six months. And look how plain this item looks. It's a vintage hotel Ritz Paris ashtray clear glass, $10 and sold for $250. Jessica Cagle Faber paid $55 for coffee bean roaster at Goodwill. Sold in less than a week for best offer of $250 plus shipping. The brand is Baymore, B-E-H-M-O-R, and it's a home drum gourmet coffee roaster. $55 sold for $250. Kim Furman. I bought this at the thrift store for $3.99 plus 25% off coupon. I listed it in December and sold for best offer of $250. It is on its way to Japan. And it is a ceramic hippopotamus figurine. Four bucks sold for $250. Valerie May Ratliff. Purchased at Goodwill for $10, sold on best offer of $250 plus shipping, listed for about five months. Listed high because I loved it so much and had it hanging in my house. Bittersweet. Vintage Needlepoint French Countryside, completed, framed. $10, sold for $250. Janine Allen Joyce our aerial yoga teacher and puppy trainer, found a Brooks Brothers crocodile belt at Goodwill for $1. It sat for a few weeks before I got around to listing. The buckle was a bit scuffed up, so I asked my husband, who details cars and has all kinds of cleaning hacks, to try to polish it up. He shined it up and then asked me if I knew it was sterling silver. I didn't, but got right to listing it. Since it wasn't engraved, I listed it for $279. Within an hour, 
I had a buyer in Japan message me and ask if I would send the buckle because Japan doesn't allow imports of crocodile leather. So I quickly put together a listing just for him. That's why the main photo isn't very good. I dropped the price to 250 plus shipping and he bought it in a few hours. I love selling belts. So it is a Tiffany and Company silver belt buckle that she sold for $250. <laughs> Way to go, Janine. Next up is Julie Norman, our postcard and ephemera specialist. She did a great podcast with a lot of helpful information. So you want to make sure and check that out if you have not listened yet and you are interested in selling postcards and ephemera. She said, lot of 1,000 postcards for $305. I bought a large lot of postcards, then pulled out the ones I thought would sell for the most. These are the ones left over and I'm already in the black. Sold on auction in seven days. So the listing is 1,000 plus, meaning more than 1,000, antique vintage postcard large lot. And she sold these for $305. KC, $80 at an estate sale, sold for $314.95 after sending offers to watchers. Listed in November and it didn't sell before Christmas. Just when I thought I'd be storing it for a year, it sold in February. 18 inch crate and barrel Christian Ulbricht Toy Maker Nutcracker Limited Edition. $80 sold for $314.95. Hydron Tobin. This was delivered today and the buyer immediately left very nice feedback. I have five more cup and saucer sets plus two saucers and the creamer in perfect condition. Additionally, the sugar bowl and chocolate pot in damaged condition. Bought several years ago at a church rummage sale and paid a total of $15. I about fell over when I saw the Meissen mark. Meissen started to make this pattern in the 1700s up into the early 20th century. From my research, I believe these are earlier pieces, but I am not a specialist, so I made no representation regarding the age. The quatrefoil form is also more rare. So this is Meissen cup and saucer. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Sold for $399. Leslie Wilson. I found this vintage Mervyn's Floppy Friends 30 inch plush pig at the bins and paid maybe a dollar. Saw that there were no comps at all using Terapeak, but found a Reddit thread of people looking for it. Put it on a seven day auction and it sold for $456.79. Definitely my highest plush sale and one I'll be looking out for. So there you see it's a rare vintage plush pig and that does look kind of plain. It doesn't really jump out at you, but it sold for $456. That is just amazing. That's what keeps me looking through the plush. <laughs> Kathleen Gifford. I sold this replica of the Vince Lombardi trophy as a favor to my son. Money is tight and he decided to let this go. He purchased it five years ago for $500. The last year the Eagles won the Super Bowl. It sold at auction for $480. So yeah, it kept its value for five years. So you can see it's a Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl Vince Lombardi replica trophy. And Zachary McDoor has another one from the toy lot he bought. These artist proof Ronalds generally list for 300 each. I had three and took an offer of 495. These are Ron English supersized artist proof lot of Ronald McDonald art. $495. And we're going to end with Scott Wolpert. Took a best offer of $1,300 plus shipping. I had it listed for two days. 
A co-worker of mine knows I resell online. He needed quick money, so he sold me this for $600. That's the price he wanted. I tried to talk him into selling it himself online, but he did not want to bother. I did take a video of the trumpet to show every inch of the trumpet and case. After fees and cost of goods, I came out with $558 profit in two days. And the item is Bach Stradivarius Trumpet Model 37 with case and extras. So that is a wonderful note to end on. <laughs> Thanks everybody for sticking with me to the end. Keep posting those sales and I'll be back next week with the seller shout out video. Make it a great week on eBay. Bye.